All right, update on the altcoin market. So before we jump in, I have just made a video for Bitcoin. It is gonna be an extensive overview of the total market, why Bitcoin is moving down and how this will affect your altcoins. If you wanna check that out, that will be my last video today, probably pu published a couple of minutes or so after I published this one. So uh, you're probably wondering, you know, why I don't have a bunch of individual altcoin videos today like I normally do. Uh, to be honest, I've had a very, very long day. I'm extremely tired and I did not want to, you know, record because there's not a lot that I can talk about for a lot of these altcoins. So we're just going to jump through them one by one and see what's going on. Let's start off with Solana. Solana's basically been a stable coin for the past uh, for the past couple of weeks or so, or you know the past week two since we're back here, the tenth of April. We've been in this accumulation range, and we have started to move to the downside. So you know I have to assume probably a move down to the ninety dollar region. That's your seven eight six. Uh, we really need to see a bottom come in fast for Solana, and I'll show you why. You know we had this triple bottom and we had a big impulse. This is the point of time where you want to see continuation. You don't want to see a throwback to the triple bottom. You know, say, I mean, kind of just say it in your head or say it out loud, you know, triple bottom pattern, that sounds bullish, doesn't it? Quadruple pa uh, quadruple bottom, that just sounds, you know, it doesn't sound right. And previously, if we come over to Solana, Solana had a triple bottom and a huge rally. So, you know, Solana's moving down, whether you want to consider this a bear flag, whether you want to consider this a breakdown of the accumulation range, uh, we are heading down in this kind of, uh, in this channel formation. Uh, we've already come down to the bottom of the channel at 92. So, you know, like I said, I wouldn't necessarily think we do have to come down all the way to 90. We've come down to 92. That is good enough for me. I wouldn't be betting on a move to the downside. However, everything is really down uh, to Bitcoin and the stock market right now. And I had I did make an extensive video for Bitcoin and everything that's going on with the dollar and the stock market and why we're seeing what we're seeing today. So if you want to check that out, check that out. Solana, Solana against BTC, very bullish still. I mean, we're still above your micro 618 and Solana priced against Bitcoin is still heading up even though Solana is down against the US dollar. Crypto.com, unfortunately, you know, we came into our double 618 region. This is where you wanted to see a big, big reversal to the upside. We got rejected from the double 618 fib and we're now heading down in terms of the micro impulse from the most recent low to the high. Or have we already got this? So low, let's make this a macro impulse or not a macro impulse, but more of a midterm fib. We're down on our last leg. So, you know, a, a solid breakdown pulling us all the way down from 38 cent would probably mean that we're coming down to, you know, anywhere between 35 and 33 cent. I'm personally not looking to get into uh, crypto.com right now. I talked about this in all my videos. I think the best time to buy is a confirmed breakout potentially of the 618. And so we see something like that, then unfortunately we are just in a downtrend and it's the same with everything right now. We've got to be very conservative. Uh, Ethereum, I never really cover this. I, I don't really like covering Ethereum at all. Like it's just not one of my favorite cryptos. And I find that no one cares uh, about Ethereum anyway. When I make an Ethereum video, it gets absolutely no views. Uh, but the daily EMAs are heading down for Ethereum. Uh, what's really ugly about this is we started to have a momentum shift, but the daily squeeze mom is now pulling us to the downside. So this really does not look good uh, for Ethereum. We're coming down similar to a lot of the altcoins today. I mean, this has got the same pattern as Solana, where we had... Did Ethereum have a triple bottom? Because this looks, it didn't, it didn't really have a triple bottom. It kind of, you know, what Solana did is we had like one bottom, we had a throw up, we had two bottoms, we had a throw up, we had a triple bottom and then a rally. Ethereum had like one bottom, a pump, two bottoms, a pump, and then, I mean, you could argue this is a triple bottom, I'm not gonna lie, like it, it is somewhat convincing, especially as you've got these ascending touch points here. So. You know, Ethereum is basically doing what um, Solana is, or should I say Solana is doing what Ethereum is doing. Um, even though I am a huge Solana fan, like, let's just be honest, Solana follows what uh, Ethereum does. Uh, I've checked this out before. I made a video on my educational playlist, how you can uh, compare the charts. Uh, I'm not going to do it in this video. I don't want to make this video too long, but I did make a video where I compared Ethereum and Solana. Solana basically follows ETH, which is very interesting. SLP, 
yeah, this is this is not good. You had your last lines in the sand down at these 786s. You can see we've got a 786 here at 15 cent. If we draw it to the close, your last 786 was down here at 14 and we have tanked below it. So lower price targets are in play. Once again, trend is your friend until the end. I do not plan on trading this until we see a solid bottom. So I imagine 12.5 cent is probably in play. Another 9% flush to the downside, I think. If we check out ICP, like we talked about in our previous videos, we were emming out and we're already coming back down to our lows at $14.74. I really don't like the setup on ICP. I think this is the worst uh, looking cryptocurrency that I've ever covered in my entire life. I mean, we're in the biggest bear flag ever. Like this crypto is just, it just, the chart looks so bad. It looks so, so ugly. And we just keep on having these local tops and then moving back down. I have i don't think I've seen a crypto that has just been in a daily bearish trend on its EMA ribbons for its whole life. I mean, we had a fake out for like a week. It wasn't even a week. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, it was eight days. So it literally was, you know, just over a week. Uh, but since then, ICP has just been making new lows. We're coming back to finally test the absolute bottom. If we have a big move below $14, I'd say $14.60 to be conservative. A big move below $14.60, in my opinion, we're coming down to much lower price targets. I've got a line down here. Is this a FIB extension? No, it's not. So your 1.618 would actually be down here at $9 and... $9.12. I wondered where that previous bottom came from. Was it down here? Let's see. So it looks like we, we could have potentially been running something like this. Let me see. Was this a microfib at one point? Did this work as a microfib? Because that will depend on whether I want to draw it. Okay, I can see that. That's why I drew it to here because, you know, running off your microfib, we actually took out the 786. So. I'd much prefer to consider the uptrend starting from here, which would leave our initial uh, fib line down here. Let me mark this orange so I know it's a fib for the future. I mark all my fibs orange, really, or at least I've started to in the last couple of weeks or so. It, it makes it so I know that it's not just a horizontal support or resistance zone. Nonetheless, I'm going off on a tangent. You can see ICP is, is coming down to these levels right now. I really don't like the chart set up for ICP. I would not be surprised if we broke below 1460. However, you know, don't get overly bearish uh, until we do break below 1460. You know, to be honest, ICP has probably been one of the greatest shorts of all time. You know, even with uh, funding fees, you probably could have just left an ICP short on for the past year and you'd probably be a millionaire if you uh, if you checked it. So uh, I could definitely be considering. I, and by the way, I'm not planning on making any leverage trades, but I think I probably will leverage uh, ICP to the downside if we break through this floor. I'm spending too much time on ICP. Let's jump on Matic. Matic had some good news coming out recently. I can't remember what the news was off the top of my head, uh, but it, obviously the whole market's moving down. I'm not surprised Matic's moving down. The last time we made a video, we were emming out, talking about a move back down to this last level, 130. I mean, technically speaking, that's still your 618. So, you know, you've got a 786 all the way down here. You've got a more midterm 786 down here. So you've got a strong level of support coming in right here at one dollar and eleven cents that's eleven percent drop you know worst case scenario flush down to 86 i don't think that's going to happen i think it's probably much more conservative to say that matic would be getting ready for a 10 percent drop bonfire nothing changed since my bonfire video yesterday actually we were pretty much in this region when i recorded the video once again if you didn't watch the video we've got lows back here we've got touch points on lows here and we're also coming down to these lows now so we really need to hold between 116 and 112 for Bonfire. Uh, I do love the Solana ecosystem. I haven't personally got any Bonfire, but I'm actually personally interested in getting myself a custom Solana name domain, so like a cowboytrades.soulwallet type thing. Uh, and you, you know, you would use Bonfire naming service for that. It's not good what we're seeing with Bonfire right now, taking a nasty drop. Axie Infinity. Since our last video, was this a double 618 or was this just a support floor? It looks like a support floor. I don't know why that's orange. 
once again, I need to... I haven't implemented this for a very long time, but I, I'm making all of my fibs orange now, so at least I know, you know whereabouts we are with them. We're moving down, we've taken out your 786 fib. Uh, I would like to see a daily close back above $39, a, a close below 39 could mean that we're coming back down to these local highs up uh, up here slash down here at $29. Not too good. Elon, Elon's having a huge, huge dump, but we've been rallying for the past week, so it's almost just completely insignificant. The macro time frames, the bulls are still in control. Uh, I could argue that down here at 9.33 we have a huge area of support, however, you know, I, I don't like what we're seeing right now where, you know, we're, we're kind of getting, you know, we just did it, but, you know, as you'll see, you can see the zeros here, and every now and then we'll, we'll flip down and we'll actually have another zero for Elon, so very, very sad times, we deleted a zero and now we're coming right back for it, uh, but nonetheless, Elon is probably the healthiest out of all the dog coins right now. Uh, I mean, I don't think any of the other dog coins are above your macro 618. So, you know, I would easily argue from a technical perspective, Elon is a lot, a lot healthier and safer than everything else. Uh, Shiba, it previously failed this inverse head and shoulders. You know, your last line in the sand is really hoping that we have like a W of some sort like this. If we come back down and take out the lows of the candle body close, you know, once again, there's probably going to be much lower price. I mean, to be fair, you've got a big area of support. Let's see, 786 Fib. What's very interesting is you've actually got a huge, huge plethora of support. You've got a touch point just below the 786. You've got another touch point here. Then you've got the 786. Then you've got bottoms around this region. Then you drag it over. You've got bottoms at this region. And then depending on whether you want to draw it up to these closes as well, there's a lot of data to encapsulate within, you know, this bullish thing. So I think uh, Shiba has a plethora of healthy places where it could come and touch. I, I don't think it'd be uh, it'd be good at all if we landslided below that. But you know, nonetheless, the dog coins. Very. I mean, this is just an accumulation range, really. We're just going to the side. Don't have much else to say about that. Uh, Dogecoin. I made a video on this yesterday. We were talking about this. You know, I talked about when you have these single day pumps. We talked about it here. You had a single day pump, didn't get any continuation, fell off the table. Single day pump, didn't get any continuation, fell off the table. Single day pump, didn't get any continuation, fell off the table. Single day, single day. I'm not going to go through them all. Uh, but we did highlight, you know, yesterday while uh, Dogecoin was up and running, we were saying, you know, be very cautious because there's a lot of times where Dogecoin goes up and has these single pump days and we never manage to get above uh, the 200 day um, and we never get continuation after the pump. So uh, unfortunately, we didn't see continuation today. Unless we just reverse out of absolutely nowhere, then unfortunately Dogecoin does not look the best in my opinion. What else have we got? What else have we got? Jasmine, let's check out Jasmine. Um, Jasmine is coming right down for my stop loss. Uh, I talked about this in a lot of my videos, uh, mainly in the past week or so. I did include a stop loss in this trade. If you are new to my channel, we got in on Jasmine pretty much at the bottom down here at 1.8 cent when the daily squeeze mom fired that we were flipping back bullish. We're heading right down to my stop loss. And I talked about this in yesterday's video. I said, you know, my gut kind of feels like um, Jasmine is still bullish, but all the technicals were pointing uh, that we were moving to the downside. You know, I, I probably should have listened to the technicals because, you know, we had a plethora of rejections from this uh, daily EMA. We were seeing lots of selling volume coming in four hourly. We're moving below the EMAs. I think hourly we already flipped them quite a while ago. So, yeah, yesterday we talked about this. We saw a lot of bearish signals. So, I mean, you know, like like I said, worst comes to worst, we come down to my stop loss at 192. I get stopped out of my trade and, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, Jasmine really needs to bottom around here. And I don't think Jasmine has too much further to go to the downside, mainly because the market cap right now, I don't check it every day. But I think it's probably around 100, 110, maybe 90 million around that vicinity. It is dirt cheap. So even if we do break below these lows, I don't necessarily think we're going to come all the way back to the lows, but yeah, nonetheless, Jasmine, not looking good today. Strong, as always, strong just never looks good. In my opinion, we've made new lows today. 
and yeah i mean it says that we're having a, a momentum shift back to the upside but you know bear in mind for the past you know whole quarter of the first year we come back reset bearish momentum come back reset bearish momentum so i, I still think strong is going to zero i've been saying that for a very long time strong probably the worst crypto that i cover uh, actually i take that back icp icp is probably the worst crypto i cover if you're if you're not including xrp actually i think xrp i think xrp takes the cake because in my opinion i think a lot of people think xrp is good and i've met a lot of people in real life that are like oh xrp is the best thing ever and i'm i ask them and i'm like have you read the white paper and they're like uh no and it's like what yeah, i don't know it just seems weird to me i feel like if you're going to invest in uh, crypto you might want to read the white paper I, I don't know i feel like i'm i'm the only one out on that i did a youtube poll asking you guys if you read the bitcoin white paper and pretty much like 80 percent of you said no so uh, i guess it is what it is but you know xrp one of the most centralized coins in the entire world uh not really a big fan of this we are heading down we do have lows down here at 59 cent i imagine we're moving down to between 59 and 54 cent once again another another lower high another lower high in a huge huge formation of lower highs we still haven't taken out the lows though we are very very slowly moving up so we might see a floor come in for xrp sooner than later let's see what's playing out here i mean something like that i mean you could argue depending on which way you want to draw it if you want to draw it to the wicks down here it might take a little bit longer to come in at 58 cent if you draw it to here encompassing this wick this wick and all of these closes because bear in mind drawing it like this you get all of these closes so i'd say this is the most accurate i, I think uh 63 cent uh 59 uh 55 i don't think we'll be coming down to 50 cent and bear in mind that is coming from someone who doesn't like xrp i have to admit i, I don't think we're going to come back down to test these lows um in terms of the lows that we've got here the lows look good to me it's just the fact that we've got lower highs that's my problem uh, of xrp and that you know the trend doesn't just focus on the daily here when i say lower highs i mean you know xrp was you know putting in a bull run up here and you know i'm sure a lot of people are going to use the uh, the argument oh xrp didn't make a new all-time high because the sec is suing it like like you know the sec suing it makes makes it so much better like uh yeah that's great your crypto didn't make a new all-time high because the sec is suing it what a what a great badge of honor to have next to your name um <laughs> i mean they're coming after it for supposedly be, being a security i don't necessarily have that much of an opinion on it um i, I do think xrp uh the, the founders like um brad garlinghouse and all that lot they have a huge huge amount of the supply so you know i would I obviously like I, i'm not investigating xrp so i don't know but i feel like you know there, there could definitely be a chance that xrp is a is a security of ripple labs uh that's just why i, I don't know I, i'm not you know i'm not betting money on it either way i still do think xrp is going to do well over the long term don't get me wrong uh, i always say this don't love it don't hate it don't trade it if you see a chart that looks like it's you know about to go on a bullish rally like for example if we see xrp start to moon out of here i think that would be such a good setup and i'd definitely enter the trade like i said you know i don't have to be a fan of xrp in the long term to you know appreciate that it does have good potential to move to the upside you know hopefully i, I mean i don't necessarily really have too much of an opinion if we move either way but i think you know the xrp if we do wrap up the case i think a lot of people could be uh coming back to buy xrp coming over to cake cake has unfortunately failed this cup and handle pattern uh it was looking so good until bitcoin just decided to take a huge dump so so we're actually coming back to the lows and if this was anything else then you know i might consider having a stop loss but i quite like cake you know we first entered this down here at five dollars forty i definitely will consider putting some buy orders in down here if we do have a big move to the downside not settled on that yet so obviously not confirmed zill uh zill not looking the greatest we've fallen out of this bear flag we've moved below your macro 618 uh, we do have strong support at the 236 also the daily emas we really want to see a turnaround now uh for zill really uh dot polka dot has unfortunately fallen out of this asymmetrical triangle rejection from the daily emas let's see what else we've got uh, basic attention token coming back down to these lows now historically 
basic attention token always bottoms in these regions. You know, you've got these big, big trend lines. These go back a long, long time since all the way back here, November 3rd, uh, or yeah, end of November 2019. These trend lines have historically been, you know, rejection points, and then we've got support, support all around this region. So, you know, worst comes to worst, uh, basic attention token is already at the first support line. I think, you know, worst comes to worst, we might move down another 10% or so. GMT, let's see what's going on with GMT. GMT converging on the four hourly EMAs. We're still bullish on this, you know, not much has changed since yesterday's video. I talked about how the trend is your friend until the end, and we always seem to trend uh, very positively every time we come back into the four hourly EMAs. You know where my stop loss is if you've watched my SLP videos, it's down here at $2.70 which I believe is the 618 fib from low to high. I don't think uh, it would make sense for us to break above the all-time high, hit the 1.618 and then come back down to the 618. I think that would be a little bit too extreme. So, you know, if we come back down here, then it could get very, very bearish in the short term. So I've got a stop loss down here at 270. OGN, once again, really, really landsliding. I, I definitely wouldn't be touching this. I, I have a stop loss down here at 44 cent. We got in a long time ago down here at 27 cent. We took the first bulk of our profit up here at 81 cent. Uh, what are we doing in the micro term? We're, we're coming down to our last line in the sand, the 786. And you've got a 618 down here. So yeah, like I said, I'm not moving my stop loss at 44 cent. Worst comes to worst, I get stopped out in what is it? Like a 2x profit from down here at 26. Not quite 2x, but almost there. Apecoin. Apecoin, did Ape make a new all-time high today? Yeah, Ape came all the way up to pretty much $20. I still think Ape looks great. I think Ape is proving itself to be a market outlier. I don't think I'm going to spend too much time on Ape because I don't think anything's changed since yesterday's video. We've come back to the four hourly EMAs. The only difference is the four hourly EMAs have gone higher up because we are in a bull trend. So yeah, $23 I still think is a very likely target. We would want to get back above $18.15 very, very quickly though. I think we're coming coming down to our last cryptos luna luna's fallen out of this uh this triangle pattern a lot of bearish volume coming in for luna on the daily time frame i'm not too too worried about luna i, I think we've got strong support down here at 76 dollars and i talked about us potentially coming up and down to 65 dollars we kind of just chilling around the sidelines so haven't really made much of a decision for luna waves waves has obviously crashed below our last line of support so in my opinion waves is coming down to 13 dollars and 50 cent what else we got yeah that's that's pretty much everything today so yeah like i said sorry for lumping everything into one video i have had a super long day i do have a bunch of other things today uh to do uh, so yeah i'm just going to include them all in one video we will be back to our normal uploads tomorrow uh, where we separate everything into one video also uh, i have finally created the discord so link in the description now if you did want to join the, the discord that is all i've got for the altcoin updates not looking the greatest but once again you know keep your eyes on you know it's all good and say, all good to say the dollar uh, but the dollar is pretty much near topping in my opinion i think focusing on the stock market hoping it doesn't take another leg down and also checking out Bitcoin, you know, I'd like to see, you know, pushes back up very, very soon. Otherwise, we could be coming down to your 37s, 34s and 33s. And then that could mean your altcoins could head down a lot. Fear and Greed is at 23 right now. Oh, it's actually at 27. It hasn't updated since we were at 40,500 though. So we could have a lot of room to go to the downside. That is all I've got for the altcoins. As always, none of this is financial advice, just my opinion on the market. And as always... Cowboy out. Peace.